This is Dave, and today's Big Hairy Idea is what happens when you measure the wrong thing. So last night, we as a family watched the movie Moneyball. We did this because I promised my son that when he finished reading the book, that we'd all watch the movie together. Now this is a baseball movie, and I am not a baseball fan. And it's based on the book by Michael Lewis by the same title which I read, and despite not being a baseball fan, I love, because it wasn't really about the sport of baseball so much. It was about what happens when you measure the wrong things, when you've got an entire industry measuring the wrong factors. That gives tremendous opportunity for those who actually understand the mistakes and are able to tweak those mistakes to just have a totally different experience and just skyrocket their success. So what is this about in particular? It's a, it's a book and a movie that follows the Oakland A's under their general manager, Billy Bean. Now, the problem with the A's was they're a small market team. They didn't have a lot of money. And baseball, unlike football, which has a salary cap, it says you can't spend more than this. So all the teams are more or less equal in what they can spend. In baseball, rich teams can just spend a lot more money than poor teams can. So when the best players go up for free agency, they get gobbled up by the rich teams who are able to build these tremendous rosters all full of talent, and the poor teams really struggle to get by to hold on to only you know a couple stars and to, to get people on there, mostly made up of like minimum level salary people, minimum wage players. So how are they supposed to compete? How's a team with a $35 million sa roster salary, like the Oakland A's, supposed to compete with the New York Yankees who had a $140 million payroll? during the time this movie was shot. It's like, it seems like it's a completely unfair game. They can't compete. But what they realized was that the Yankees and all the other teams in baseball were actually measuring the wrong factors. So we've been talking about these last two days, the idea of key performance indicators, KPIs. And we point out that knowing what your important factors to measure are can help you stay on, on track for in your, both your life and in your business. But you have to be careful you're actually measuring the right things. You know, as Tony Robbins says all the time, it's like what you're measuring is what's going to grow. So if you measure the wrong factors, you're going to grow in the wrong areas. And they really found that baseball as a whole was looking at statistics and measuring really dumb factors. Like some of them made sense, like home runs. Okay, we can really evaluate people on that. That's a key performance indicator. A home run is a great thing. Measuring players based on how many home runs they get, that makes a lot of sense. And then there's batting average, which was Good. It wasn't a bad number to be using, but it's a really incomplete number. In fact, it's really funny how the whole batting average was made by a guy, a British guy who was only knew cricket, never knew baseball. So he didn't know what to do with walks, because there's no such thing as a walk in cricket. So he just discounted them. He decided, okay, that's not going to factor in at all. It just will be considered the guy didn't go get a hit, he didn't get an out. It's just considered he wasn't even up at bat in factoring out his battering at batting average, and that was kind of the normative baseball understanding for a long time. They considered a walk to be the pitcher's fault because he just, in his pitch, he missed the strike zone, which is why there was a ball, which is why there was the player walked. But when you stop and look at it, you'll see that there are certain players that lead the league in walks every year and other players who are very in, impatient at the plate and they swing at all kinds of junk and they strike out all the time. They almost never walk. So you actually find that if you look at what percentage of the time players get on base, it's a very different number than the batting average alone. So it was a good number, but it was an imperfect number. And you had to look at other things like on base percentage and slugging percentage, which I won't probably go into at the moment. And they started to tweak the numbers of what they looked at. Then there were things that were really ridiculous that people were also looking at, such as what they called the ugly girlfriend factor, which literally said the scouts would look at a guy, if he had an ugly girlfriend, they'd say, this player, he must lack confidence, otherwise he'd be going out with a beautiful woman. So they'd literally discount players based on, based on the attractiveness of their girlfriends and also on their attractiveness. They talked about a guy with like a, that look and a big, good, strong jaw. You really wanted a good, strong jaw on a baseball player. What did that have to do with him being at bat? Nothing. And so Billy Bean assembles this team of players. And as the book points out, they're kind of funny looking players. Some guys had a weird pitching motion. This guy who was a, a submariner would throw a really low pitch rather than a normal high pitch. And so teams didn't know what to do with him. He looks funny. They didn't want him on their roster. And other guys who, who walked a lot but didn't, didn't hit, didn't have the highest batting averages, and so their value was way down. 
And they'd find people like that. They'd find these bargains. And they found a guy at, at uh, a catcher who had an arm injury and couldn't really make those long throws anymore. So they decided, oh, but he was really good at the bat. So they decided, all right, I guess he's going to be a first baseman because first basemen don't need to throw much. And they started shifting things around and winning crazy amounts. They had the longest winning streak in the history of baseball, despite having a roster payroll that was a quarter the size of the bigger teams. And it was all because they started measuring different factors than their competition. And this is a real learning lesson for all of us, I think. It was only after, you know, I've been doing these videos on KPIs, key performance indicators, for a couple of days now. And it was only after we finished the movie that Hannah says to me, wow, this is really relevant to what you've been talking about. Because these baseball teams were measuring the wrong factors. And when you measure the wrong factors, you're going to excel in those things you measure. You'll have the players with the attractive girlfriends, but if there's no correlation between attractive girlfriends and wins, then, you know, during the games when the camera's panning through the crowd, it might show, wow, look at how attractive this, uh, this girlfriend section of the, of the stadium is, but it won't actually result in more wins there because attractive girlfriends, they found, don't actually lead to more victories. And this team really broke it down and started looking at what are the things we need to measure intelligently. And that's really the message I want to leave everyone with today, is that it's not enough to just be measuring factors. You need to measure the right factors, because if you measure the wrong ones, it's going to completely derail you, completely send you off, off the rails and take your business in a direction or your life in a direction you don't want it to go. So it's not enough just to be measuring. We want to be thinking, how do I make sure that I'm measuring exactly the right things? What are the factors in my life that most lead me to live to my full potential, to my vigor? I know one of the things that, that I have, we can talk about key, keystone habits later, but I know, wow, if I'm doing a good job of getting up in the morning at a really good time and a healthy time and getting good exercise, well, those are things that help me make a really successful day. If I go to the library and I'm able to hit my 2,000 words of writing on a given day, that's part of what makes it a really successful day for me. So I need to make sure that I'm measuring these right factors in order to have the success in the life that I want. So I just leave you with that question. What are the factors that you need to measure? And are there, is it possible that you're actually measuring factors that don't contribute to your success? If so, you need to seek those out and get rid of them and replace them with something far more empowering.